today's video, I'll be going through the top 10 questions that new users have about Amazon FBA. So welcome back to the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already doing so. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 questions that new people have when they want to get involved with Amazon FBA. Each question is time stamped in the description. So if you want to skip any, just head down there. So let's get started. So the first question we have is what is Amazon FBA? So if you have seen my previous videos, I'm sure you know what this is already. But if not, we will just be explaining this again. So Amazon FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. So this is where Amazon fulfill your products for you. So the concept of it is, is you're buying products from retail stores or wholesalers. You're sending your products into Amazon's warehouse. They then store them for you. They sell them for you. They dispatch them to your customer and they deal with all the customer service. Now, it's a great business model because it really is so hands off because Amazon are basically taking part of all the back end logistics for you. Your only real job is finding the products and sending them into Amazon's warehouse. And what this means is that you can focus your time on growing your business rather than the boring task of actually managing. Amazon take care of all of that for you. So because of all this, you can grow a really large business with limited resources and limited staff. Now, if you do wanna watch a more detailed breakdown about Amazon FBA, check out my previous video where I talk all about it. I'll link it in the top left hand of the screen. So the next most question we get asked is, what are the fees involved when using Amazon FBA? So the first fee involved is the Amazon account subscription. So this is 25 pound a month plus VAT for a professional plan. Now there is a free option to use, but we strongly recommend you use the paid one. The next fee is the referral fees. So this is the fee you pay to Amazon just for selling your product on their platform. So this fee is different depending on the category and it can range anywhere from 7% up to about 15.3%. And you have to pay this fee every time on every sale whether you're selling FBA or FBM, which is fulfilled by merchant. Now the next fee is the FBA fee. So this is the fee you pay to Amazon for then sending the product to your customer and everything in between. Now this is all dependent on the size, the weight, whether it's in the small and light program, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a very reasonable fee for the service you're actually getting because your customer is gonna be getting it most of the time next day, sometimes even same day. Now there are a few other smaller fees which aren't as important such as storage fees, prep fees, labeling fees. Now prep fees and labeling fees are optional fees because you can do a lot of it yourself. And then finally, your main fee is your software fee. So realistically to sell using Amazon FBA, you will need some sort of software depending on the type of FBA you're doing. So your options are arbitrage, wholesale or private label. If you're doing arbitrage, um, you'll need something like a deal analyzer so you can check all the data on the products you're selling. With a software like Profitool, our plan is 30 pound a month or if you're on a yearly, it's as low as 12 pound 50 a month depending on your package. So that's a brief rundown of the fees. I have also done another video in the past where I go into a lot more detail about all the fees involved with selling on Amazon FBA. And again, I'll link that in the top of the screen. So the next question is how much does it cost to get started? So obviously we do have them costs I just mentioned with the subscription, but of course there are other costs involved. So these include the stock of the product you're buying. You do have to buy the stock. It's not drop shipping, printers, boxes and packaging and so on. So if we start on equipment first, so that is your printer, your packaging, scissors, tape and so on, you're probably realistically looking at between 150 to 200 pounds if you have to buy everything. Obviously, if you already have all this, then it's not gonna cost you as much. If you're doing something like online arbitrage as well, you can just reuse the boxes, so you'll only need tape, for example. If you was doing retail arbitrage, so you're going into stores and buying it, you would obviously have to put them in your own boxes. So then you have your subscriptions, which I just mentioned in the last bit. So you've obviously got your Amazon seller subscription, which is 30 pound a month, and then you've got your soft software subscription, which is gonna cost you, if you're on a monthly plan, between 30 to 60 pound a month. Now the next important part is the product. So obviously you are buying the products. A lot of people think you need a lot of money to start an Amazon FBA, which isn't true. This is only usually the case if you're doing wholesale or private label. Now the main method we recommend to get into Amazon FBA is arbitrage. This is where you're buying products from retail stores, whether it's online or in the shops. You can quite easily start with between 100 and 300 pounds on your first set of products. So if you add that all up together, that's a range of 310 pounds up to 590 pounds a month. But obviously it can be cheaper if you've already got equipment like printers and so on. The next question is how do you find products? 
So you have two options here, you have manual sourcing or you can use a sourcing software. So firstly, manual sourcing, this is exactly how it sounds with tin. This is you find your product yourself manually. So if we use arbitrage as an example for this, if you're doing it manually, you might go through the clearance sections on websites looking for potential deals, or you might be going into stores looking for sale items and, you, and using that to find your FBA deals. Now using software can be the best method for new sellers obviously it's going to cost you more money but it can just make it a bit easier for you because a lot of the hard work is done for you now here at profitable we do have our deal finder service where we help you find products so if you have a look at the screen just now you'll be able to see exactly what deal finder is so deal finder is our portal of potential fba deals this gets updated twice a week on tuesdays and fridays and basically what we do is scrape a huge amount of websites looking for potential deals so if a product for example is 10 pound on argos if that same product is £25 on Amazon, that will go on DealFinder as a potential deal. So DealFinder is not a checked deal service, it is a potential deal service only. So let me just show you quickly how this works. So um, you'll see there's a huge amount of categories and in the last update there was over 1,000 products on here and you can pick between um, you know, looking for deals you can sell. Obviously a lot of these you might be gated in. It can just save you a lot of time and make your life a bit easier. If you're new as well, you're not gonna know where to look. You're not gonna know the type of deals to look for. And it can give you a really good head start with your Amazon FBA. So next up is how do you analyze your product? So analyzing is the key to Amazon FBA. Just because a product looks good on the surface doesn't necessarily mean it is a good FBA product. So a product might be cheap where you're buying it from and expensive on Amazon, that doesn't always mean it's a good product to buy. So this is why it's so important to use a deal analyzer like Profitil, because it can just save you from a lot of bad buys. So let me just show you quickly how exactly how Profitil works and how to use it to analyze your FBA deals. So we're on this product here in Argos, it says you can add them to your trolley that you actually can't, but we'll just use this as an example just to show you exactly how um, Profitil works. So if we load up the extension um, on the website, it does pre-fill, it does try and find a product for you. And then we'll just click calculate and we'll show you quickly what we're looking for. So um, there's a few parts, key parts of data you always want to look, look for. Firstly is obviously the sales. So this is selling 30 to 90 units a month. Um, profitability, so this makes £16.77 profit um, based on the current price if you're buying it at 50 and it's selling for £89.99. But again, just because this is a good profit, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good buy. You need to be looking at things at the warnings as well. So IP risk, hazmat and oversized. IP risk, that means intellectual property risk. So you want to avoid it avoid these hazmat that just means it's a potential dangerous item oversized not that big of a deal just means that fees can be higher but where we get the most data is from the price graphs um, so we use these price graphs to firstly make sure we're not going to get undercut and just to confirm sales as well and straight away on a product like this it's why it's, it's so important to analyze your um, fba deals um, so the current price on amazon is almost 90 pounds but if we look at historically um, the price has been as low as 50 pounds and there's a very high chance that um, you know in the future this seller here which i believe was amazon because it was highlighted um, in orange um, there's a very high chance that this seller will come back in stock and they'll start selling it as low as 50 pounds i mean even cheaper then but if we just have a look at this um, at 50 pounds for example and then click recalculate and then we'd be losing 15 pound 88 and that's why it's so important to use a deal analyzer um, to get all your key information um, to look for risks to make sure we're not, not going to get in the cut to make sure it is actually selling um, because if you don't use something like this you can get a lot of bad buys so the next question is what is gated and how do you actually get ungated so being gated means that you have to have permission from Amazon to sell it. You're not allowed to sell in that brand or category. There's two types of gating. You have brand gating and you have category gating. So brand gating, that means you are not able to sell that brand. So that might be Playmobil, for example. Category gating, that means you can't sell that whole category. Now, how do you get ungated? So to get ungated, you have to have an invoice of 10 products that you have purchased within that brand or within that category from a wholesaler or a manufacturer, for example. Amazon will not accept retail invoice. It has to be from a wholesaler. Now to see if you're gated or not, it's really easy to do. So if you take um, an ASIN, if we just head over to the Amazon account here, which you'll see um, on screen, if you paste the ASIN into the search for a product here, and as we can see on this product, we are gated. So look, when we click new, it says apply to sell. So apply to sell means we are gated. So if we click on this product, does your account um, qualify? So this is a branded um, gating. You'd have to click request approval. 
And funnily enough, on this one, we've actually automatically approved. So that is something else which can happen. So um, if you are gating in something, if you click apply, sometimes Amazon just automatically ungates you. Now, a lot of the bigger ones, they won't do this. So if that is the case, you just have to get an invoice with 10 products. Now, I have done a video about this in the past, which I'll link again in the top of the screen where I show you exactly how to get ungated and the website to use. There's a couple of websites to use, but getting ungated in as many brands and categories really can open up your FBA. So the next question we often get is how do you send your products into Amazon's warehouse? So it's a lot easier than most people think. It's not difficult whatsoever, and it doesn't even take much time, really. All you have to do is go into your Amazon seller account. You firstly add the product you purchased into your inventory as an FBA product. You have to add an SKU. You have to add the price your quantity, what country the item has come from, for example. And once it's in your inventory, you click send inventory, and then you just follow the steps through. So you have to add information like the box size, the weight, and so on. And then what you can do on Amazon itself is you can book the collection with UPS, and the collection cost is really reasonable as well. But if you do want to see the steps in more detail, again, make sure to check out my previous video where I've run through all of this information. So the next question is, what is the buy box? So if you have a quick look on the screen now, you will be able to see a buy box. So this area here, this is the buy box, and this is what every Amazon seller wants to go after so only one seller gets this box you get the add to basket or buy now button now if you don't have this buy box you will come under here other sellers on amazon but why it's so important is because if you have this then you're going to get every single sale now how does amazon decide who gets this typically it is the cheapest seller that is why amazon can be such a competitive marketplace because the cheaper you are the more likely you are to get the buy box now what a lot of new sellers don't understand is that if you just match the price of the buy box so don't try undercutting the buy box seller if you just match the buy box price amazon share out the buy box between the sellers so if you're the same price that seller might have the buy box for a little while so they'll be getting all the sales and then amazon will switch it over to you so doing this is really important because it means not only will you tr minimize the risk of pricing wars so doing this is really important mainly just because it just minimizes the risk of causing price wars and the buy box price just driving down really low which you really want to avoid now that leads me on to my next question which is can you win the buy box against amazon now a lot of people think it's impossible to win against amazon and this just isn't actually true it is however very very difficult and there are a few important things which you need to look at when deciding whether to compete against Amazon. So firstly, your profit has to be very good. You have to have a lot of room for movement because obviously typically Amazon is gonna be buying huge volumes, way more than you are, and the chances are they're buying it way cheaper, so they're gonna be able to go a lot cheaper than you can. And then the next thing to look at is the price graphs. You can almost always see whether Amazon shared a buy box on the price graph. So if you have a look on a price graph and you can see that there's been an FBA seller who has had the buy box and it's cheaper than Amazon, so Amazon has been more expensive about the buy box. That means that they've been sharing a buy box, so that means you definitely can compete. Now, going for products like this, we'd only really recommend if you've got experience with Amazon FBA, if you are a new FBA seller, you're probably best to avoid ones like this, but obviously Amazon buys so many products and they are on so many listings, so if you only ever go for products which Amazon aren't on, you are gonna minimize your FBA opportunities. Now, question number 10, which is, is it worth it? And the answer is yes. Amazon FBA is an amazing business model. It's easy to scale without huge investment. Every day it is just becoming a larger and larger market and more and more people are shopping on there. Now, please don't think it's easy to learn. Amazon FBA is a very difficult and hugely competitive place to be selling online. But if you do put in the work, you really can do well from it. Now, the thing you'll spend most of your time learning about is sourcing FBA deals. If you can learn how to successfully source FBA deals it is so easy to become successful on amazon but it does just take time to learn so if you can stay persistent you will have great success so thanks so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already doing so if you do want to join profit or if you want any more information head to our description where there's lots of links and if you want to learn more about fba make sure to check out our previous video but that's all for now and i'll see you in the next one